All right, welcome everybody. So I wanted to make sure that for all those students that missed the first day, that you got the opportunity to uh, see who I am and to introduce myself to you for my financial algebra class. So let you guys know when we come back to school, uh, I am in room 266, which is upstairs in the math wing, and I look forward to seeing you. So first things first is my name is pronounced Mr. Steiger. That's S. Tiger, like the animal, which you see here. And then if you are in my first hour class, we have the lovely Miss Blair with us. And the second hour, we have the lovely Mrs. Young with us. Um, they will be helping me along the way as we go throughout this year. So please make sure you say hello to them as well. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is um, I want to know about you. Now, you're going to answer these following questions in Canvas. And it's very important that I know these things because of the curriculum and how we're doing it this year. It's very important that I know what are your plans for after high school? Because we will be talking a lot about that this year. For me, ladies and gentlemen, and to you, it's to make sure you understand that I want to find out, are you going to go right into a career? Are you going to go to the military, maybe community college, or maybe just right to a four-year university? We'll talk about those things as we go through because this um, curriculum and this class is not just about finding out about math, okay? Math you've already learned, but putting into a real world context, but also identifying who you are, okay? And then secondly, um, do you plan on staying local or be going to live somewhere else? Now the main reason for that is because as we go dive into careers and budgeting and a couple other areas, um, we want to know and I want you to know that you need to plan accordingly, okay? If you're planning on leaving this state, then when we go looking for careers and I go say find a career somewhere, don't look here. Okay, you look to where you're going. If I say to budget um, for food, okay, you can look at some of the grocery stores here, but you'd also want to look at grocery stores in the local area of where you're going to. Because it's very different from here than say California or Vegas area or to the Midwest somewhere or maybe even all the way on the East Coast. We do have different styles. So I want to make sure you guys understand those things. So make sure you go on Canvas and answer these questions and then we'll go from there. And then a little bit about myself. So uh, my very first job is this uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, last fall in October I took a trip to Michigan to see my family and I took this picture. It still exists. Or actually this might be from Google Maps. I think this one's from Google Maps actually. So what it is is you can see they have it and I took a screenshot of it I'm like oh my gosh. So a nice paint job. Um, this ladies and gentlemen is where I had my very first job. There's a backstory I tell some of my students sometimes about a guy who was a go-getter. Uh, he was probably in his mid-20s when I was 16 years old uh, at my first job. I couldn't actually drive yet, but lived here. He actually would open KFC, walk across this parking lot, and close Taco Bell. And that was his life. He enjoyed it. He was on his own. He did his own thing. Um, after that, I joined Myers, which is a grocery chain store in the Midwest, similar to Walmart. And then I joined my father's company as a ju late junior year, early senior year, um, where I did centerless rebuilders, where I did drafting and stuff for him. The point I tell my students, especially in financial algebra, is that I started working at 16 before I had a car and I haven't stopped since. Okay, after high school, I joined the military. This is a picture of the actual jet I worked on. This is an F-15. The tail number is 77139, um, built, meaning it was built in 1977 and it was number 139 off the assembly line for that year. Uh, a cool thing about this is that uh, this is like F-22 paint all over this. It was a test uh, jet, so you can kind of see there's F-22 paint here, and then this symbol here is a little darker because that's F-15 paint. They were checking the stealth technology of it, and some cool pilot was flying with it and took a nice picture. I found it many years ago, and I've kept it ever since. Um, and then after joining, doing the military for eight years, I started doing some financial work. So I did accounts payable and then a financial analyst position for a company called Smart Practice, which is in the Valley. I did it here and I did it for these dental practices here. And so what I make sure I tell my students is that when we talk about real world situation in businesses, I've dealt with the finances. Um, we, uh, when I worked with Soro Dental Group, uh, I was in the process when we first started, we only had this dental practice. And then over the years, um, we purchased this one, and then we purchased this one, and then we purchased this one as well. Um, by the time I joined, they had not, um, by the time I left the company, they had not had Choya, but you can see how it kind of grew. And then finally, my last couple years um, before I left, it was um, making sure I worked at Gilbert Hospital, which you guys know I was off power, but it's been closed. I joined that hospital when they were coming out of bankruptcy initially, and 
I remember to this day looking at the writing on the wall and understanding how finance works. Working with all these different things and, and over basically 20 years of experience, not just in the military but in the finance world, that's what I'm bringing to this class. I'm not a teacher that's been standing up here in the classroom for 20 years and then saying this is what's going on out there. No, no. I've lived it. I've been out there. And I've only been a teacher for four, this is my fourth year teaching. And so what I do is I'm bringing in the real world analysis of what it looks like to see a, a company be successful and one that fails. And then to kind of go through the process of making sure that students understand that, okay? Um, one big key thing is, is always brought up to me is will you be treated fairly in my class? Well, as we talk about life in general, I want to make sure that you guys know that you will be, okay? But my teaching style may not always agree with your personality. Um, I am straightforward and to the point and sometimes to a fault where I want to make sure you guys understand that I'm going to tell you like it is, okay? And, and I'll go over that in a bit later. But understand that sometimes you may not like what I say to you. But everything I say is going to be in a context of being fair and respectful to you. But what I say to you may hurt your feelings if you're doing something you shouldn't be, and I'll explain that in a bit. Especially in, when it comes to um, work ethic and how we do things within our classroom, okay? Because in financial algebra, all right, we usually will have either papers on a nightstand, or not a nightstand, on a uh, music stand that's in the classroom, or in Canvas. Now this year we were planning on using Canvas in my financial algebra class anyways. We have a computer cart in here. I was going to have you grab computers every day, log into Canvas, go into the assignment, and we would walk through the assignments together. That's not going to change. Okay, We're still going to do that. It doesn't matter if we're virtual or in person or doing remote learning. It's going to be the same thing. Okay, Now, if you want to print stuff out at home, you can, and we can talk about that later as we go through this process to see if it works for you, if it's feasible for you, if you have to write things down and you want to like take a picture of it and send it to me and turn it in that way, we can talk about it. But there's a main thing that within Canvas, I'm giving you the ability to do all of the work, okay, and to turn it into me. Um, when we do get back in class, we'll turn in cell phones uh, to a designated phone holder that I have, or ladies and gentlemen, you keep them hidden because school policy states. If I see it, I'm supposed to take it. Um, typical day, we usually do, uh, I do have music playing most of the time when we come in. Um, that allows you guys to kind of get in the groove of things and to realize that this is a fun and happy environment because I want to make sure you guys are ready to learn. Um, uh, usually we get computers out during that time and just get settled in. I, I see how things are going, make sure people are getting organized. Then we do talk a little bit about the previous day, but main thing then we discuss. Uh, the topic of the day related to real life finance and math. Okay, Now, I only spend half the class period or a little bit more than half talking about those things. But the main thing I want to make sure you know is that I give you time in class to do things. And so, and this is where previous, my previous comment, you may not like my teaching style, is because I give you time in class. And if I see that you're not doing it in class, I will call you out and get very upset with you. Now. The reason is, is because, ladies and gentlemen, I am providing you an opportunity to succeed. The question is, is what are you doing with that opportunity? That's the main thing that you have to look at, okay? Here's the grading scale. So we have end of unit exams. Um, that's going to be 30% of your grade. We also have lesson activities and projects, which I will explain that grading, uh, how we grade in those in a second. Uh, that's 30%. We have exit ticket quizzes student activity packets, and then the big test at the end of the year. This is daily, almost, okay? This is almost daily where we'll have a lesson, uh, lesson notes. They call them student activity packets. I went with it, okay? You'll do that activity packet in class with me, and then I'll give you enough time to do the exit ticket quiz after. The exit ticket quizzes are, about t are usually 10 questions, and that's it. And they are based on what we've talked about during that day. So this is where I want to make sure you understand. If I'm giving you the opportunity to succeed in class, if I'm giving you the time to submit things in class, if we're using class period time, and this is the virtual as well, that to do the work, and you don't do the work while you're in class with me, there's a disconnect there. The only students that have ever almost failed my class, I've never had a student fail financial algebra. I mean, you're seniors, you really can't, because if you fail my class, then that means you're going to have to quickly take a RISE Lab class to graduate high school. But most people basically have only had a couple hover around the D land area, and those students were lazy. 
and I told them that they're lazy. And that is where we usually have a disconnect. Now, if you don't like that, then ladies and gentlemen, do the work, okay? It's not difficult work. This class is a combination of math, reading, and writing. If you do the things that we, I ask of you to do, not only is it beneficial to you because you'll learn something new, but ladies and gentlemen, it's something that you'll not only learn new, but you will use it the rest of your entire life. That's the difference about this class, okay? Here's a rubric that'll kind of tell you how the scale is broken down. So all student activity packets are worth five points. Here's the rubric out of five. Give me full, complete sentences, okay? When I ask you to write something out, it needs to be in a full and complete sentence. Now, I understand you may not like to write in full and complete sentences, but guess what? You're almost an adult. Some of you are gonna be an adult. Some of you are 18. You wanna be treated like one. I'm going to give you that opportunity, okay? I want you to write in, I, the words I don't know should never be in any question that I ask you. It needs to be an elaboration of why you may not know something, or like for example, if I say to you, do you have a checking account? Your response would not be yes. And then if I ask, how did you set it up? It wouldn't be, your response should be, yes, I have a checking account. It was set up by my parents when I was a sophomore in high school because I knew I wanted to have my own money and a place to keep it. That's a full sentence, okay? That's kind of the stuff I'm looking for and we'll talk about that later um, as we go through the lessons. Uh, here's an example of how projects are graded out and how much they are worth, okay? Here's a nice little snippet. But what I want you guys to know is on your student activity packets, they actually have this in here. This will be the first one that we'll do in our lesson. And what it does is it says person to person payments and it gives a time frame of how long it should take. So ladies and gentlemen, that's how many points it's worth, 20. Then they have like later on, uh, when we talk about careers, there's creating a job application, that's 25. And then every once in a while, we may do a case study. Case studies are larger. Now, within the context of all these Word documents are hyperlinks that will take you to the sites so you don't have to go searching around. Everything is given to you. But case studies are worth usually around 60 points because it says about 60 minutes or an hour to do. So this would be three times as much of this because of the amount of work you have to put in. Okay, I only make it just fair like that. Um, quickly, I'll go through this. This is Remind. If you have not signed up, a lot, some of you did in Financial Algebra. Please use this app and sign up. You can send a text to it if you want. You can text this at FAWFHS uh, -A -A to 81010 if you don't want to download the app. And it'll give you to um, the Remind, we'll send it to you. If you want to download the Remind app, please do that. If you want to log in through your computer, you can use your computer and go to Remind and sign up for a free account and then put in my student code, okay? It's Financial Algebra WFHS. That's the only way, this and email, are the only way that you can get a hold of me and that I'll respond. Um, when we do a videos, um, including this one, I will put most of them on Canvas, but then I, ha I will link them to my YouTube channel. Uh, this is my YouTube channel, it's all one word, Steiger Math. I've had it for three years, I've been doing video lessons for three years, and I'll continue to do video lessons for the years to come, because it's helped me during, in the past, help get, um, if students have missed school, I've always made sure that I uh, put stuff up there so that if a student says, hey, I missed yesterday, uh, I wasn't here yesterday, what I missed? I say, here's the notes, go to my YouTube page, watch the video, simple as that, okay? Same thing applies here. Now, while we're doing synchronized learning, I wanna make sure you guys are a couple things. Dress appropriate, have appropriate brack on. I would like you guys to be visible on camera so I'm not staring at a bunch of circles with two letters. Now, if you're uh, um, uncomfortable with that, um, please see me because, uh, but I wanna make sure I can see you guys so I know that you're there because we've already had one freshman get up and walk away and then yeah, magically come back and he's like, where's the rest of the class? They all left. Ah, that student was dumb. Okay, so just make sure, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll call you out for that. Um, be visible, mute your audio, use appropriate language. Remember, you're in, this is technically in school time, so be smart about it, okay? Um, raise your hand. Everything is recorded. It's not published online. It's kept private on the service here. The main reason is because, ladies and gentlemen, there are school rules and consequences still apply, okay? We can't meet in person, but we're meeting meeting visually, uh, virtually, so what you need to do is make sure you act appropriately, just like I have to, okay? So don't um, sweat the small things if you do things right. All right, so some things I wanna make sure we get um, is that 
Um, I now back out so you can read these, so you can pause the video. No yelling, please. We are gonna talk about some things in this class that some people may not, not necessarily always agree with. Um, we will talk about some principles of, of math and credit, um, how some people um, want to get credit cards and some people will never get a credit card in their entire life. Some will want to use cash only, but unfortunately that's starting to go away because of the coronavirus. And then some people want to use debit only and then who's a better bank, this or there. Um, and when we start getting all sorts of things about why do we need to go to college, why do we need to do this, be respectful. Okay? We all have different opinions and I'm fine with that. Just make sure that whatever you do is respectful, that you're not yelling, and that you don't have any sarcasm. Don't abuse the chat box. Attempt to find the answer on your own, okay? Um, you're almost all adults in here. Use gr proper grammar. This is set a respectful tone. And once again, pause the video if you wanna read all of this. And so that way you're being respectful of each other's personal feelings and beliefs, and we're not ripping on each other. Um, submit files the right way. I will show you this. The biggest problem I will have, ladies and gentlemen, is you not following along. In the spring, I had difficulty with students learning how to submit paperwork to me. Um, it's the simplest thing I've ever seen in my life through Canvas. You just have to do it um, and know the process and the steps, and you guys will be able to submit everything like this, okay? It makes it quick. Read things first, okay? Um, if you read articles, um, it talks in here about absorb all the information before crafting your reply. Please don't read something, get inflamed or get upset right away and just start firing away an email, okay? Or a text or something in the chat. Read the whole context of the situation before you do because I want you to think before you type and be kind and professional. Um, in today's world of stability of uh, social media, which I have gotten rid of completely, the big thing I've seen is that people just jump on everything. Jump on everything. What you guys need to understand is that you need to think before you type and be kind and professional. That's what needs to happen in this class. If we ever encounter any type of capitalistic principles that somebody may not agree with, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you how it works here in America. Okay, here in the United States, how the finance world works, how everything works as it says. You may not agree with everything, but that's the way it is, okay? So, and then we'll change things up. When I talk about credit cards and how they're marketed towards young individuals, you may not like that. Well, you can't change that, but what you can do is not be brought into it, okay? That's how you can recognize it. We talk about, I've heard already people say, I'm not going to college because I don't want a student loan debt. Smart, but that's not why you shouldn't go to college. I will show you a way to go to community college and be debt free. I have three students, one that's went all the way through finishing his, he finished his community college. My son, he's debt free. My daughter's almost done, she's debt free. My youngest is going right now and he will be debt free. It's all about what you make of it, okay? When we do return, ladies and gentlemen, I will have a policy set up here where um, this is kind of the guidelines and we'll, we'll talk about this. The main thing is knowing that no matter what, this classroom is a no winding zone, all right? Um, we all have problems, we all run into things, we all have challenges of life. That's not what this is, okay? This is, you knew what you were supposed to do, you and I talked about doing it, and you chose not to do it, and then you bring back another excuse. Ladies and gentlemen, no, no. Or I assign you something, and then you say, well, I don't wanna do that. Why? Give me a justification, okay? And if, if it's something that we need to discuss, we can but don't come at me with a whining tone, please. Um, and last one is, is you're almost adults. I will tell you like it is always. If you're being lazy, I will call you lazy, all right? Um, and I, because I work harder than most, I expect the same from you. So that is where my teaching style may not always fit with some of you because you may not think, well, how dare you call me lazy? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you're doing that, I will call you that. Now, do I mean it to be hurtful or offensive? No, what I mean is that you need to understand what your shortcoming is and to fix it. So that way when we are getting out into the real world, because in a year from now, there's no such thing as first day of school anymore. You're done. You are gonna be in the real world and an employer is gonna be looking at you and what will they see? Will they see somebody that's hardworking, determined to get things done 
Or will they see somebody that is being lazy? It's your choice now and in the future. Because the last thing is, um, I truly believe in everybody's potential. I always have. Um, I want you to believe in it too, no matter what. Um, it's going to be an awesome year. This curriculum is going to uh, hopefully teach you guys a lot about being an adult and what it takes to, it takes to succeed. If you ever have any problems or questions, please reach out to me via email or remind. But it's going to be a great year, and I look pleasure uh, and I look forward to being your teacher this year.